Hi, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. I was going to go to sleep, but I slept so much last night. And I'm just not quite tired. I've been working in my studio trying to clean it up. It's such a small space and I have so much stuff that it gets cluttered very easily. So it's like a constant battle just to keep things in their place. Hi, Marla. I was just saying I have to um, keep on top of my studio because I have so much stuff. If I don't keep everything in its place, it gets out of hand that easy. Hey, Psych Sauced. Welcome. Welcome, you guys. Am I doing okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I don't know if... Marla, if you um, saw the video I made where my mother, who hasn't spoken to me in five years, she I got a letter in the mail from her a couple of weeks ago. If you can call it a letter, I think it was two sentences. <laughs> but um, I need to write her back. And hmm, I, uh, I, gosh... I guess I'm procrastinating, but that's not really it. It's because I don't know what to, to write to, and tell her. I want to tell her how I really feel, but I don't want to scare her off. Like, um, it took her five years to write me two sentences, so I don't want to come back hard on her or even hard in a nice way. You know what I mean? But it's hard for me to make small talk with her, <laughs> so I don't know. How are y'all doing? Oh, I can show you those little duckies. They're so cute. Can you... There they are. Are they cute? They look kind of like the little rubber ones, don't they? Close enough. I thought they were cute. I don't know what I'm going to make out of it. Probably a... Um... Oh, earrings might be cute. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were so cute, too. I got them at... Um... Michael's the one shopping center that we have that's closest to my our house um in the same small shopping center they had um a Joann's and a Michael's but I was up there yesterday and uh the doors were locked at Joann's and there's no sign and like people, random people that I talked to, I asked, or I said something, you know, about Joann's and asked a couple of people when they closed and no one seemed to know. So it's really strange that they just closed their door without any warning. <laughs> you would think they would have a big sale or something. I don't know what's going on, but. Anyway, um, so yeah, I found these at Michael's, and Michael's beading section has changed. They've um, they've got a lot of new new um, stuff. I don't know, like they have a lot of these kind of kinds of beads with um, every different little kind of animal. They have, I saw, they have a small Christmas section um, um, with Christmas trees and little packages that are wrapped. They, all of them were so cute. Cute, cute, cute. I did think I bought some bumblebees at one point, but I think they were part metal and part ceramic. I guess these are glass. I don't know. Oh, they're lamp work. I didn't know that. 
Ah. Someone blew these? No, wait. That doesn't even make sense. Doesn't Lamport mean blown glass? I think. That's what it meant. Hello? My chat disappeared. I must have pushed a button somewhere. There it is. <laughs> the other day I pushed some button on my computer and it wouldn't type. Like I could press the buttons, but all you would hear is a click sound. And it drove me crazy. I pushed every button up here and it didn't help. So I had to go on my phone and Google it. And of course it was just, I just had to push two keys, but I did have to restart my computer. Joanna is undergoing bankruptcy proceedings. Ah, well, um, I guess you heard about that on the news or something. Yes, lamp work. Um, lamp work. Their lamp work beads are usually like um, people, they're from blown glass, I believe. Um, people that blow glass, and they have a certain look to them. Um, I know I have some lamp work beads somewhere, but if I started digging, it, it might I might run into them, and I might not. But yeah. Um, Let me see what Google says about lamp work. I'm pretty sure they it's it's a style or a process. Of course, um, that phone is um, dead. <laughs> I carry around three phones because I use them for different things. Let me just see what they say about lamp work because I'm interested in the exact meaning also um you would think i would know being a glass worker i mean i started doing stained glass right after i um graduated high school in 1980 and within um within i say a year and a half or two years i knew how to um make a stain do stained glass make a window so um, lamp work, sorry. <laughs> what are lamp work beads? Oops, no, of course I did, it didn't say it right. Oh, but it understood. Oh, all these YouTube channels are coming up. Um, why are they called lamp work beads? Lampwork is the term used for making beads and other shapes from melting and forming glass in a flame. Hundreds of years ago, the glass used to be heated over a small oil burning lamp. Hence the term lampwork. Oh, cool. So I guess you don't have to blow it. You just have to like, I know, you know, you can, when there's, Doing lamp work, I have seen someone make a lamp work bead, and they use rods of glass that are, you know, about that long and about as thick as a pencil, and they put over a flame, and they can they can manipulate the, the molten glass. It's pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, lamp work. Been waiting to get some beads to complete some projects. But waiting for disability. Oh, wow. Yeah, gosh. How long have you been in court with the disability stuff? Um, kind of like iron pouring. Yeah, I guess. Um, I've watched a little bit of... Um, I did a term paper or some kind of paper in um, college um, and... I forget the title of it. It was, I think it was um, how to how they make a sheet of glass, like for stained glass. And um, so you know, I, I watched a lot of that molten glass, and it's pretty. I don't know. It's scary. That stuff gets so hot. 
And I always wanted to learn how to blow glass, but um, I'm not so much interested in that anymore. But um, that used to be on my bucket list. I got my lawyer oh January second go around. Yeah, um, you should. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Hi, Nicole. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, I got my, I was, I had my bicycle accident um, less than a month before I turned 40. Oh, my gosh. I hated turning 40. And then then I had my bicycle accident. So I was in the hospital for my 40th birthday. Thank goodness, because I didn't know whether I was going to cry, whether I was going to celebrate it. You know, I just didn't know. I did not want to turn 40. But um, so they told me that... Um, People my age, people under, what they say, under 60 or something like that, rarely get disability. And they told me to be prepared to fight, you know, fight it out. It might take a while. I got mine on the first go round. But listen to what the judge said. The judge said, I'm going to grant you, you know, your disability. Um, but we're going to start it from the time that your son was born until um, the time you got pregnant. And the whole courtroom just about died. He said, because if you are able to have sex, then you must not be as disabled as you're saying. Something like that. Everybody, everybody's jaw dropped that a judge would would say something like that. It was horrible, <laughs> and it was embarrassing too. But I mean, I I just I just about died. But anyway, so the attorney was just horrified also. But um, so we went before another judge and. Of course, you know, I got it right away. But, um, yeah, that's the story about my disability. <laughs> I've been on it for, since 2002. Let's see. I had to think about that. Um, you're in your late 20s. Oh, my gosh, you're so young. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Um. Yeah, that was crazy, Nicole. <laughs> Who tells somebody that just because they... And it's not that I could have sex, really. I mean, I did, obviously, because I got pregnant. But, you know, can you say lay in there? I mean, really? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, after my accident, I had my accident in California, and... I was unable to take care of myself, so I had to move in with my mother. She lived in Florida, so I didn't know anybody, and I met my son's father, and we were just kind of hanging out, friends at first, and I would go over to his house, and we would play chess, and um, I was drinking back then, and my mom wouldn't let me drink at her house, so I would go over to his house, and we'd play chess, and or watch TV or whatever. And, but I, you know, I was allowed to drink at his house. So long story short, I ended up staying there more and more. And then I finally just moved in and about six months, around six months later, I just couldn't stand the man. And so I moved out back in with my mom. And a week after that, I found out I was pregnant with twins and I had no kids. I had just turned 40. I had had my accident and I was pregnant with this guy that I wasn't in love with. It just was a, a fling, you know? Oh my gosh. What a nightmare. But, oh, he begged me to move back in and I didn't. And that's how it always starts. Yeah. Drinking and playing chess, something like that, huh? 
But hi, Johnny. Welcome. Welcome. Um, but I'll tell you what, I am so glad that I had my son. Um, I didn't want to all those years. I didn't want to have kids because because I just didn't feel like I wanted to settle down enough, you know. I didn't want to stop doing the crazy stuff I was doing. And uh, it's kind of selfish, yes, but I knew I wasn't ready to be a mom. So I used to pat myself on the back because of that. You know, at least I didn't have a, an alcoholic baby or whatever. But I have since stopped drinking. I do have a drink now and then, you know, maybe once or twice a year. But I don't know. Hi, Janet. Welcome. Your owl gets me every time because when I first see it from a distance, I can't quite see what it is. You know, so I have to focus in a little bit better. But I love that owl. Um my artist ex-husband, he painted um, four, four different pictures of owls. This was a long time ago, like back in the late 70s. Anyway, he used to be with a, a print company, and they made prints of these four owls. And do you know that he still gets royalties? And especially the one of the barn owl. It made so, and sold so much that he has made so much money off that one painting. And we find it on, like, in thrift stores, we'll find, see that owl. We see that owl everywhere. It was in the movie The Crow. It used to be on that show, um, Sanford and Son. It was hanging up in that messy house. <laughs> and it's been in a few other things. Mm -hmm. You're 10 days without alcohol, Johnny. Wow. Is that because you're trying? If you are, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Congratulations. Keep up the hard work. I know it's hard. I need to quit smoking cigarettes is what I need to do. But like I said before, I love them. <laughs> I love cigarettes. I don't know. I just do. Oh, uh, Zenu Marlene, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just have water. <laughs> but anyway, I had two years with no Oh. Oh, you had two years with no booze. You're 10 days now. Like I said, congratulations. I read that wrong the first time. Yep. One at a time. That is amazing way to go. Sending you good vibes. Congratulations. Yes, we're always pulling for people who are trying to do hard stuff. <laughs> That's hard. I think besides cigarettes, because I've, you know, of course quit before, but besides cigarette, cigarettes, alcohol is the hardest thing to quit for me. Yep. You smoke too, Nicole? Yeah, I've been doing it for so long. I'm almost, this sounds stupid. I'm almost afraid to stop because I have heard of so many people that when they stop, they get, and they get cancer. I don't know. I think it's a toss up whether, I mean, I can't say that I think it's better not to quit smoking, but sometimes I, I think, yeah, I do think that. That just sounds so dumb. Love me some cigarettes. I want to take a. I smoke menthols. Yep. Filters is too short. You bite your filter. Is that what you were gonna say? Oh, burn yourself. <laughs> I bite my cigarettes for some reason. I think because like if I'm doing something with my hands, I'll have it. I don't do this in public because it's not ladylike, but I'll have it hanging out of my mouth. You know. That's terrible because it's, my mom says, it's so unladylike. But, um, yeah, I smoke menthols. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Janet. 
three years. That's a long time. That is a long time. I think, let's see, I went into rehab for drinking when my son was, I think, six months old. Um, and I stopped for many, many years. But um, I guess maybe about five years ago when my mom disowned me and I was out there. I I started drinking a little bit here and there. It, I, it never got bad again. But now, because they say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. I don't know if I believe that because it doesn't entice me anymore. And I can have one or two. But I know it wasn't like that for me, you know, years ago after I got off rehab. I, I had to stay far away from it. Um, if, if I don't smoke, I bite inside my mouth. Ooh, Nicole, don't you can't do that, silly. I smoke no filters, but I'd like to quit. I really like smoking weed, but I can't because work. Ah, uh, that sucks. Eventually, I started drinking again, but I'm definitely done with it. Well, you know what's best for you, that's for sure. Nicole, you said that, and I caught myself doing it. Oh, my gosh. That hurts, you guys. Biting the inside of your mouth. Oh, golly. I hate it when I accidentally do that. And gee, I already feel better again. Starting to feel normal. Sleeping is still difficult. That is a hard thing to do. I, I The older I get, I swear, the harder it is for me to sleep, you know? It's terrible, terrible. It's like insomnia is starting to become a big, bothersome worrier. I'm not worried about it because I don't have to get up at any specific time. But it's just um, terrible to have to like run myself down to where I'm just, you know, can't stay awake anymore before I can fall asleep and stay asleep. Uh, Kelly, I'm still trying to understand the whole complex issue around drinking, etc. Um, I don't quite understand, Janet. What do you mean? Um, the, about the complex issue around drinking. My, my complex issue, let's see. Sleeping was the biggest issue for me when I quit drinking, but it was worth it. Yeah. You're going to slip on out of here, psych sauce. You have, the, you have the appointment tomorrow, right? I think, yeah. If you do, I want to say good luck. I just had two MRIs. I guess it was last month. I had to get my... C spine and my lumbar spine. Oh, your complex issue, Janet. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I think I have a few complex issues. But yes, have a good appointment. We'll be thinking of you and we'll be waiting to hear the outcome tomorrow night. Get good rest. That will help. <laughs> oh, goodness. Is that a picture of your dog, Marla? Do you have a, what is it, a husky? I can't see that good. I think I have to go to sleep. My caregiver will be here in a few hours. Yes, MRI is Wednesday. Yes. Well, thank goodness MRIs don't hurt. But I know you said you can't lay down flat. Or something. I have that problem too. I have to bend my knees before my back will, will, you know, go straight. So they put um, they had some kind of triangle pillow thing they put under my knees, so they were able to get the image like they had to get it. I guess when we drink ourselves to sleep, it's hard to sleep without it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It does making it does make sleep a lot easier. 
That's for sure. But um, I guess I forget. I guess I was in a rehab one time. They gave me Seroquel for sleep. And a lot of people don't like Seroquel, but um, it works so good for me that um, that's what I use. I, I mean, I haven't had any in probably a year, but I have some, I think I still have some Seroquel in there, but that's what I ask for. It's easier to get that than any kind of um, sleeping meds, at least around where I live. They don't like to prescribe anything. A husky golden retriever. Oh, it's a beautiful dog. Beautiful, beautiful dog. But anyway, <laughs> what time is it? Four thirty-eight. Oh, there's eleven people in here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about anymore. Let's see. Um, what is today? Oh, I was going to say, I, I watched part of that interview that um, I gave Cricket. And um, I don't know if any, any of you have heard me say, I think I said it one time in Cricket's um, chat. And maybe another time somewhere else, but I need to go get my teeth fixed, especially before the cruise. And I am so embarrassed because you can really see this is my top teeth that that are really bad. But like when I was interviewing Cricket, oh my gosh, my teeth showed my top teeth showed a few times. I'm so embarrassed. So um I looked up and got some numbers for dentists around here because I don't have a dentist here. We've lived here two years and I just haven't been to see a dentist. So um, I wrote some numbers down. I'm going to make some calls tomorrow. And I think I am going to, um, to record the whole process and show the before and after. Cause I don't know what else to, have for content on my channel i mean i want to build it up a little bit i really do like interviewing people i need to get someone else on here there's three people that have kind of um said or hinted that that they would tell their story but you know every time i say to email me or i give them my phone number i haven't heard back so but, oh, hi, Anne. Lovely to see you here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. But yeah, so I thought, well, I'll document going to the dentist. And I I think I'm, oh, I know what's going to happen. They're going to have to pull all my teeth. I can't afford to get, um, what are the expensive kind? Um, Slip in my mind right now. As Johnny says, I stopped taking prescriptions in 2020. I still have a big bottle of Xanax. I'd rather use natural remedies. Well, good for you, Johnny. I'd rather use Xanax. I'm not going to lie. Isn't that terrible? Oh, my goodness. Um, you're getting your, I'm glad you were getting your teeth fixed. Yeah, I need to. Cause it's really embarrassing. I didn't know. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Marla. You're so sweet. Um, yes, implants. I can't afford that. Hi, Susan. We're talking about, I'm talking about my teeth and how embarrassed I was in that interview that I did with Cricket. And um, so I, I told the chat that I was thinking about recording the whole process. I have to find a dentist. Then I have to, you know, then make the appointment. And then, um, go there and see what they have to say and find out the cost and no one can afford it and hummingbird i don't know i think my ex-husband i don't know how he afforded it because he's an artist he never has had money i think someone i don't know oh he told me he told me that he put an ad in the paper this was in, in las vegas 
this was years ago. Um, he put an ad in the paper there and saying that he was an artist and he would trade dental work for some paintings. Well, he got a, um, a dentist to go for it and he painted some murals for her, I think, in her home. And she gave him implants, if you can believe that. Oh, thank you, Johnny. That's so sweet. I am, sometimes I'm honest to a fault. Someone the other day told me I shouldn't tell so much over the internet. But you know what? That's just me. And, I mean, there's a few things I wouldn't say. But, I mean, I'm not as brave as Reese. I mean, I could never be that honest, but but I do tell pretty much everything about my life, good, bad, and ugly. But anyway, my ex always managed to get stuff for himself. In that, in that, the truth. <laughs> Hell with the rest of the family. Yep, that's like, oh my gosh, he is so cheap. And so money hungry. And oh my gosh. He cannot stand it when I say that to him. But when we argue or I, I say it like it is. I don't try to <laughs> sugarcoat things. But um, yeah. So I'm going to have to get dentures. I've already gotten used to that fact. That's better than having broken teeth though. Where I can't smile. Plus, I think it will fill out my face, too. Because I don't have any teeth from, like, here back. I have a couple. They're broken. But I think it will fill out my face, maybe. And I won't look so drawn and droopy. Gosh, I wish I could afford a, um, a mini facelift. <laughs> Been up since 2 a.m. trying to be quiet and not wake up anyone else. Oh, hi, Heather. How are you? Welcome. I've seen people going across the border in El Paso, Texas. Get them some done cheaper. They have like 300 dentists in a small town, a couple of thousand people. Some American dentists even went there. Really? And um, I'm afraid to get stuff in Mexico. <laughs> I remember like, um, cause my aunt lived in, in, um, McAllen, Texas, my aunt and uncle, and that's right on the border. And we used to go down there, you know, growing up and we would go over to Mexico and get little souvenirs and stuff. And when we got older, um, we would get somas and, um, they never, I never thought they were any good. And my sister got birth control pills there and got pregnant. So I don't know. I guess you could find a good dentist there, but how would you know? You know, you know, people have gone to Tijuana. Wow. Hmm. And it turned out okay, Ann. And it probably did. But yeah. Um, plus, I mean, I can drive. I don't have my license right now because I owe for a ticket from like probably 10 years ago. Maybe not that long. Maybe about eight years ago. But anyway, they want, by the time I pay for it, it's going to be like over $500. And I don't have a car right now. So I couldn't get to the, um, Mexican dentist anyway right now um there if it is on YouTube about oh cool huh I'll check it out a lot of people even Canadians go to Mexico for dental wow now I'm surprised to hear that I don't know why I'm surprised but I am hmm they have reviews just like here. Yeah, probably so. I would never do it personally. I'm terrified of the place. Are you? I am so um, not afraid of anything. And I probably should be because a lot of people would say I'm careless like him. Today he was telling me 
So I went, I took my scooter up to the shopping center um, yesterday and my batteries, uh, my batteries, they're not holding a charge like they should be. They're less than a year old. And so I'm calling them tomorrow because I got stuck up there and it was like probably 10 or 11 o'clock that I had to call him to come and get me. But um, he says, you always do stuff that is not the best or you make decisions that aren't the best. You know, I thought that I might not ever see you again or and uh, I don't know. I just think I'm just a little careless, but I'm just not scared because when I was homeless in Austin a couple of years ago, I was out in the streets, running the streets in the hood, um, going here or there uh, for two years and knock on wood, nothing bad ever. I mean, bad stuff stuff happened to me like i got robbed and stuff but not at night and not from people i didn't know it was always people that i had met you know street urchins they have no honor down there like i've heard people talk about homeless communities and how um they help each other out so much and they would never steal from each other and that's not what i experienced at all they would take your last penny they would take your shoes while you were sleeping they would take everything but hi care for jc welcome do they have ticket amnesty where they reduce ticket costs in your state to settle back tickets i don't know marla i need to check that out i really do i i i think i've asked that before and i was told no but um, maybe by now they do. I, I, I'm going to check that out. If you knew what doctors do here, you'd be afraid to go here. Where are you, Johnny? Are you in El Paso? I, oh, you live in... Oh, do you live in Mexico? Janet says. Um, yes. Still up, that's for sure. <laughs> we are the late stay at late, late. I don't know what late, late night. <laughs> okay, and thanks for popping in. It was great to see you, honey. I still owe you an email. I promise I haven't forgotten. Um, I took some water pills yesterday, and I haven't taken water pills in so long. And oh my gosh, you guys, I was up and down all night crying because I was having to go to the bathroom so much. I ended up making a mess. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> so um, why did I tell that story? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't even know why I told that story. <laughs> oh, because I haven't done it, written you your email. It's because I ended up sleeping. I got some good rest and um, I just haven't sent your email yet, but I will. I promise. Have a good sleep. And Johnny, you do live in the States. Yeah. Hmm. Late, late stay ups. That is exactly right. Just like David Letterman used to be the, was this the Late Late Show? I know. Um, no, Johnny Carson was the Tonight Show and David Letterman was the Late Show. I'm the Late Late. I don't know. Have to think of something more clever, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But... Anyway, I knew of and heard some crazy stories of what doctors do to people on purpose. Oh, my gosh, that would be terrible. Those death nurses, yes, and doctors are a real thing. Yes, can you imagine? <clears throat> Excuse me. I do not know what people are thinking when they do stuff like that. Just thinking they can even get away with it just blows my mind. It's crazy. 
night. Oh. Oh, hi, Miss Donna. I almost missed you. I'm so sorry. I like, <laughs> you know, I can usually um, do two things or three things at once, multitask. But um, I start talking and then I take my eyes off the screen and I forget to look back down at it as much as I should. I'm still getting used to all this. <laughs> but... Um, I almost miss Miss Dawn. Hi, Kimberly. Welcome. Doctors cover for each other's mistakes. Oh, you can bet they would. You can bet they would. Aren't lawyers kind of like that? This kind of reminds me of the Mormon church and the um, Scientologists who cover up their SA crimes. You know, they people are so good at covering up. For people hopefully hopefully all that will be well it's already exposed I guess it just needs a wider exposure before we can I don't know I'm so proud of this movement that we have going on um, it's just amazing to me and I'm just as proud as us who don't live near an org um, Letterman was the late show. Yes, Craig Ferguson was a late, late show. Craig, I don't know who, I don't remember Craig Ferguson. Hmm. But I, I was saying I'm as proud as, as us who don't live near an org, so we can't be out there protesting. Um, but, you know, what we do behind the scenes in our chats and, and the support monetarily and and just um, the support, the way we love these people and love each other is is just as admirable to me as what the protesters are doing. They're just more obvious, you know, because we don't go around <laughs> with our phones um, live streaming anything. But I was thinking of making um, welcome... Is it, I'm going to say it like I'm from the South because I am. Hans Christian Schwartz, welcome, welcome from Germany. And you're having your coffee. That sounds good. I love, I love coffee. I drink it day and night, believe me. Um, they would never get away with it if the government didn't approve of what. You are so right, Johnny. You are so right. Our government uh, needs to get on the ball, that's for sure. My friend developed sepsis after her surgery, and no one would help her because doctors were afraid. That's sad. That is so sad. I can't even imagine. How scary would that be if you couldn't get help? Oh, and, oh my gosh. My husband is a doctor. I don't know how things work in the U.S., but I do know how things work in Canada. Do they cover up for each other? Doctors cover up for, for each other in Canada? I guess they would do that anywhere. Um, and then, you know, I, there's good and bad in every profession. We, we have to recognize that. But works for me or just Christian. Um. Oh, and that's adorable. I miss that. What part of, well, yeah, what part of Germany are you near, Christian? Oh, you're just saying for your name. I was trying to figure out, I thought you were talking about like a, a Christian, you know, from the Bible, like a Christian. I was confused. That's why I got quiet for a minute. Okay, I'll just call you Christian. <laughs> that's so much easier. Oh, darn. Silly, silly me sometimes. Y'all have a different system there. Yeah. I mean, um, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Your health care is, everybody has health care there, right? You don't have to buy health insurance, Janet. I don't think. You just get health care and I'm sure you get dental too, don't you? 
to get it. I ain't talking about all of them. I'm sure some are great. Yeah, I just know of personal people I know. Yeah, it's sad. But like I said, I can't afford to get the implants. So I have $4,000 um, for dental insurance. And I'm pretty sure I can get what I need done. Not what I would like to have done, but I can get what I need to have done with $4,000 should be enough. I'm hoping <laughs> because if it's much more, I'm going to have to find somebody that will take payments. But I don't think I'll have to do that. Really? Oh, uh, dental's only covered for low income households. That's fine. I wonder why they treat dental so much different than um, other health care because you can get really sick from having, you know, bad teeth or bad gums um, gum or mouth, you know, your mouth and gum health is, is so important. So I don't know why they treat it. So well in the United States, you know, they treat it so different from, from health insurance. It's dental insurance is harder to get. I think it's more expensive and I don't know. They act like it's not as important. And like if you go to prison here, like um, you can go in and see a doctor, you know, for things. But you can't really see a dentist. I mean, if you're in prison for a long time, they will they will make sure that if you get a cavity, they don't fill it. They pull your tooth. That's, this is in Florida. Um, they will give you dentures if you're in prison, but but my point is like you can get a medical help in prison, but not dental help. So I'm just wondering why it's so different. To me, they're both so important. You know, people have died from mouth disease. I heard it. Dental is only covered for long. Okay. I heard it takes a long time to get approved for some procedures in Canada. Is that true? Good question. It's a debate now. I think it should be covered too. Fluffer. Hi, Fluffer Squirrel. Yeah. I went on live because I wasn't tired after Cricket's chat. So I threw myself on here and there's 15 people here and we been here for how long have we been here oh 48 minutes gosh time does go by so fast when i'm talking it does johnny says i broke my leg in canada in 2003 and it was only 400 bucks to get it fixed wow that's a that's unheard of here they even gave me a couple of good pain scripts crutches etc they wouldn't do anything until i paid though Wow, 400 bucks for a broken leg. That's amazing. What would it cost here? Like, I, w I was going to say 20,000 by the time you went to the hospital. You'd have to go to the emergency room. And after everything was said and done, I can see how breaking a leg would cost $20,000 here. Um, let's see, John, that's because you were. Oh, because you weren't a Canadian. Is it cheaper if you're not a Canadian resident? That's what it sounds like. Huh? Yes, now even hearing is... Wait. Thumbs up. Now even hearing is now linked to... Oh, hearing is linked to dementia. Huh? Wow. I believe the body uh, baby boomers will get this changed in the USA. There is legislation pending now. Johnny says, I know, Janet, G. it would, would have been thousands in the States to get it fixed. It sure would have, for sure, 20000 now. Yeah. Yep. It's not cheap to go to that ER. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. You don't even have to 
stay overnight. You go there and get your legs set. You'll be there a couple of hours. And um, if it's not crowded and you'll have a bill for 20000 That's crazy. Cray, cray. Crazy, crazy. I don't even know how much. After my accident, like I was in the hospital for three or four weeks. Only because my mother came from Florida to California where I had my accident. She just came to visit me. Her and my aunt came to visit me. And the doctor would not let her leave without taking me because he knew that um, I didn't have any place to go. And he told my mom, you've got to take her back with you. I can't release her. You know, my boyfriend had left me. So I had no place to live. And he's like, I can't release her knowing that she doesn't have a home to go to. So you need to take your daughter. <laughs> My mom was just as surprised as I was. But um, I remember getting this humongous hospital bill. Of course, I couldn't. And I never have paid a penny on it. But I mean, they write those off. I know that. Um, which is no excuse. But I can't imagine... You know what? No, wait, 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 wait. I take that back. They had to get paid because I got disability. And when you get when you get disability or when you get don't doesn't medic or doesn't don't these hospitals get paid back before you get your settlement? I know when I broke my hip, I was going over a pothole in my wheelchair. And it was filled with water, so it looked like a um, pedal. And my front tire got caught in the pedal, which was a pothole. And it threw me out of my wheelchair, and it broke my right hip. And that was the, that's the first and only time I've ever broken a bone. But um, So I sued. The, this was at a bowling alley parking lot. And I sued the bowling alley because their parking lot was full of potholes and it was terrible and after six months they had not even lifted a finger to try to repair their parking lot and you know it's dangerous for other people too so anyway i um sued them and i ended up getting a small settlement um like thirty thousand dollars but medicare had to be paid first and the hospital had to be paid and you know they all had to be paid first so i i walked away with less than half of that less than fifteen thousand dollars i believe but anyway yeah so i was gonna say i don't think um I paid back when I had my big accident, but the hospital had to have gotten paid. If, if I got was getting disability, they're not just going to not pay my hospital bills, you know. I don't know. Um, Fluffer Squirrel says that NHS is far from perfect, but I'm so thankful for it. It's unimaginable that in the worst times you have the added stress of medical bills. That is true. That is true true what is the nhs oh no i don't know i don't know what it is nhs janet says i could talk for hours about the canadian health care system <laughs> there are problems with the u.s system it's problems with the canadian system it's complex but i've had cancer twice chemo once i am grateful Ooh, bless your heart I can't even imagine going through that. Can't even imagine. Oh, kudos to you. Uh, my mom, they were paid. Marla says, yeah, I'm sure they were. Well, that makes me feel a little better. Because I thought for years I was thinking I walk, just walked away from my big hospital bill. But Okay, they did get paid. Um my mom got diagnosed with um, ovarian cancer. Was it this past September? I think it was on her birthday. Her birthday is two days after mine. So her birthday was September 22nd. She 
she fainted or something, my sister said, and she went to the emergency room, and they released her, but then she had to go back for something, and they told her to go to a regular doctor for tests or something. Anyway, they found ovarian cancer, and, you know, um, that's a very aggressive form of cancer, I guess. Um, I haven't really studied it that much because I'm not supposed to know that she has cancer. You know, I'm the daughter she's disconnected from. So I guess she doesn't want me to know anything about her personal life. That's what she told my sister anyway. So um, I guess she went through chemo and then had operation to have a tumor taken out or something, but um, She's taking a, a chemo pill now, I think. That's what my sister says. And she's doing okay. But I guess I will write my mother. I, that's how I started out tonight in this chat saying I need to write my mother a letter. But oh my gosh, I just don't, don't want to get into all that. I'll start crying and then I'll get mad and then I'll get sad. And oh, that whole emotional roller coaster uh, I'm going to have to go on just to write a letter to her but I, I better do it because it has definitely been at least three weeks no it's probably been more like a month <laughs> oh my gosh um, Janet G says, um, or Johnny says, Janet G, from what I know, the biggest problem here is who runs or owns. Ah, I lost my, oops. Um, the hospitals, also the doctors, the doctors, lots of organized crime. It's the same people that are involved in the child trafficking. Really? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's frightening. All Canadian hospitals are government owned. Oh, wow. Yeah, I guess they are. I didn't think of that. Nicole says, oh, National Health Services. Okay, that makes sense. How long have you been married? Or, um, I'm not married right now. Um, I met my ex-husband I'm 61 right now. I met him when I was 17 and he was 42. He's 87 right now. I just live with him because my mother wouldn't let me come back home five years ago. She dropped me off at rehab and wouldn't let me come back home. So I was on the streets in Austin, Texas for two and a half years, got tired of it. And he was the only one I knew that to call to ask if I could live with him. And that was, that was two and a half years ago. And um, he was living in Northern California and kind of talked him into coming to Florida because that's where my son was living at the time. And uh, we are not married. We live in separate rooms. We fight like cats and dogs. Um, the past couple of weeks, we've gotten along a little bit better because I think he finally realized that he can't treat me like he thinks he can treat me. I'll freak out and he hates it. He hates to argue, but I don't put up with his bull crap anymore. anymore. I was with him for 13 years. We didn't get married till 11 years after we were together and the marriage only lasted two years and I left. So... Um, then we didn't see each other for how many years? Like, gosh, I want to say like 40 years or something. Didn't see each other. We kept in touch here and there, you know. And uh, then two and a half years ago, he gave me a place to live. Of course, I pay, I pay rent. But that way I don't feel like I owe him anything, you know. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't know what this arrow is there. Oops. Um, I heard of doctors getting a 5K payment to get rid of someone. Say you are in a 
pension from a local company that pays you 50k a year they will just pay the doctor five to ten thousand to get rid of you that is so hard to believe i, I don't it's see i hear stuff like that i'm sure it happens but i find that hard to believe also i just can't imagine there's that many bad people out there that would risk their license to practice and i don't know uh you wish you were bsing well i hope it's not in a city where i live <laughs> Oh my gosh, what if you didn't send the letter, write, write the letter, send her a little piece of jewelry. You don't have to use words right now. And her letter was clear. She's not ready to talk a lot. You're right, Marla. You're right. You're right. I don't, I don't know. Maybe now I'll think about that and I'll let you know what I decide. I mean, write the letter. You need to write and keep it. Okay. Yeah, I do need to get it out, like out of me. So maybe I will write a letter but not send it. That's a brilliant idea. And then I can say what I feel I need to say. So since I'm not sending it, then I can just be real honest. And I don't want to be, like, mean. But that's a, a, a fabuloso idea. I'll write it and then not mail it. That is great. I will write and tell her that I received her letter and thank you for, for writing me. Oh, on the outside of the envelope, she put his last name. I want do want to let her know I am not married and to quit quit using his last name. Next, uh, next time you write, mother, please don't use <laughs> that last name. <laughs> but, uh, um, does he still get around and stuff? That's pretty, yes, he's, I think he's in better shape than I am. I mean, I, I'm in a wheelchair and he's still walking and he eats a lot better than I do. He doesn't smoke. So I'll, I was going to say I'll die if he outlives me, but that, that wouldn't have come out right. But, um, yeah, he's still doing real good. And he's an artist. He paints every night. Um, he has a garden going in the backyard. Uh, yeah, he lifts my wheelchair in and out of his van. Um, let's see. Let me write the letter. Okay. <laughs> they aren't even risking it. The majority of the people in the town area know it, especially the police sheriff. Wow. What town are you talking about, Johnny? Janet, yes, write the letter, then look at it a day or so later and just start that, that way. Yes, I will do that. And I will probably start it tonight after this. Heather says, why are you in a wheelchair? Um, 20... For, no, 22 years ago in 2002, I had a bicycle accident. It was just me and the pavement. A car didn't hit me. There's no car involved. But uh, my front tire went, it was nighttime. I'd had a couple of drinks. Um, I was bartending at the time. It was Memorial weekend or Labor Day weekend, the one in August, whichever holiday that was. But, um, my i rode i lived in a little main street california town and so i rode my bicycle everywhere just because i wanted to get exercise and i got off work and was on my way home and i just misjudged this this place where i rode my bicycle home and there was a two foot drop off and my front tire went over it and i went over the handlebars and I landed on the left side of my brain and I jammed up my neck, ended up with a spinal cord injury. Um, yeah, it was a pretty bad accident. I couldn't even move my arms when it happened. Um, I couldn't do anything. Couldn't feed myself. Couldn't, I couldn't sign my name. Of course I couldn't walk. I have a little movement in my legs. I can maybe walk two or three steps if I have a walker. Um, I have no balance. My toes don't grip like 
like normal people. So I walk kind of like a duck, flat footed. So my balance is just horrible, just horrible. But yeah, that was 22 years ago. And um, I guess you will die if he out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was too stupid funny. Care for you? I forgot your name. Care for you, JC. I, I think I have it written down somewhere. Anyway, the first time, write the letter saying whatever you want, even the nasty thoughts. Then rewrite with less ugly, at least in the first one you get to say yes. Yes, because I feel like I need to say um, what I need to say, you know. And it's probably stuff she doesn't want to hear. But I do want to get it out so it's not just sitting in, in my brain festering, you know. Ugh. So... Oh my gosh, thanks. I think my hair looks terrible tonight. It's too long though. I'm going to get it cut up to my shoulders. I've never had it this long. It's way too long and it gets in my way. That's why I always have it in a braid. But thank you for the compliment. It's really common on the East Coast. I know Scientology isn't the biggest problem in Clearwater. They picked that town for a reason. Oh, really? Huh. Huh. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I, I heard um, L. Ron Hubbard picked clear water because of the word clear in the, in the, um, you know, in the name. That's why he picked clear water. I don't know where I heard that. I heard one of the one of the people that left, one of the second gens, I think, said that one time. I don't know. I have found Tai Chi really helpful for balance and strength after injury. Well, I bet if I could even, my muscles have atrophied so much and gotten so short that right now, um, if I don't start stretching it's going to be really bad because like this sounds, this sounds terrible, but I don't know another way to put it, but like I can't spread my legs at all because the muscles have gotten so short, you know, and there is no way I could do like Tai Chi or yoga or anything like that. My, my body just doesn't move that way, especially my legs. But, um, I'm glad that that was helpful for you. I think that'd be cool to be able to do stuff like that. <laughs> a while back, I was having dreams that, because I don't dream a lot, but I'll go through phases where I dream a few nights, you know, and I'm never, um, I'm never crippled in my dreams, you know. I just, I dream like, like I'm me before my accident. So it's really weird. <laughs> um, good point, Johnny. It had to be corrupt to begin. Oh, clear water had to be corrupt. Yeah, I'm sure. Otherwise, they couldn't have gotten by with all that. It just amazes me what the Scientologist got away with and continue to get away with. Yeah, I mean, it, it blows my mind, really. It really blows my mind. And the LAPD is so blatant about the favoritism. I mean, they're not afraid of any repercussions from, you know, what they do. They are not afraid of anybody at all. And they do... They do underhanded stuff right out in the open for everybody to see while they're being streamed across the world. They're stupid if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, it's going to catch up with them one day, I, I feel. They're not going to be able to continue doing what they do. They're going to do it to like to the wrong person 
just bad treatment to the wrong person one time, sometime, and it could go really bad for that depart police department, you know? That's what I think. Um, did I say free? Oh, dear. I'm not a spokesperson. Just help me out. Oh, did I say you said free? I don't know. Oh, I see. I see. I do Tai Chi with 90 plus year olds. Oh, cool. That were told they need hip and knee surgery and didn't after a few months. That's amazing. There's even a chair. Tai Chi. Oh, wow. Lots of free videos online for free if you wanted to try it. Did I say free? Oh, dear. I'm not a spokesperson. <laughs> Just help me a lot. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check out the videos, too. They have a chair. A chair. Um, is it called Tai Chi? Yeah. Yeah, I'll check it out, too. They have YouTube um, videos for everything. I think it's so wonderful. I mean, anything you want to do in your house, anything that needs fixing or you can find it, um, a video on YouTube about it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. But I'm falling asleep sitting up. I'm tired. Okay, there's chair yoga too. Yeah, I wish I could afford to have someone come in here and just push my legs for me and help me stretch because I can't do it. It's hard to lift them. They feel like they weigh a hundred pounds a piece. I only weigh 121 pounds, and but my legs each feel like they weigh a hundred pounds because when you, when you don't have all the nerves feeling of like nerve ending feelings in them, um, it's so hard to explain, but, um, they, they just, they're so heavy and I have to like physically lift them. I need help. I need someone come in here and stretch my legs for me. <laughs> um, I thought when I had my last physical therapist, that they would help me do that, but he, he didn't. <laughs> and I kind of hinted, hinted around to him that I needed to stretch. So he gave me those big rubber bands, you know, to, to wrap around my foot and to pull. And so I could raise and lower my leg with those big rubber things. And that works a little bit. It's better when, when someone is pushing, like pushing your leg, have it up straight and pushing. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, I, I wouldn't want to say my teacher as I wouldn't. Wait, I got behind again. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, I wouldn't want to say my teacher as I wouldn't want them targeted because, yeah, that's understandable because of me. But, yes, lots of people online. Um, Triple H, you should go. I'm sure it's going to be great. Okay, Marla, good night, dear one. Thanks for um, the letter. Tell me to write the letter. I am going to do that. And I'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> does your insurance cover physical therapy? Yes, my insurance does. But it's always the same thing, you know. They'll come to my house and they'll want me to do a few little things. And so I do it to humor them, but um, it never helps me. But if I could find someone to help me stretch, that's what I, that's what I need. I might ask my doctor about a physical therapist. I was just at the doctor a couple of days ago and they're looking into getting me, they're going to send somebody to maybe make my, bathtub a walk-in bathtub because I told him I need someone here helping me get in and out of the bathtub um I can't do it by myself anymore and I need help I was saying all kinds of stuff because um they will pay Richard to be my um helper so I want to get that ball rolling because we're going to split the money <laughs> because he doesn't really have to help me with anything but um 
that would be extra income. But uh, after they do my bathtub and stuff, I might tell them that I could use, you know, all I have to do is, is drop the word that I would like a physical therapist. And I guess I can do it a couple of times a year, you know, ask for one and um, they're okay with that. So yeah, I'll probably do that again. But anyway. Okay, Johnny. God, why do I have there? I have this arrow box thing that keeps covering up my, you're going to go to sleep, Janet. Good night. Yeah, I'm about to sign off to I, for a minute there, my eyes were closing. Oh my gosh, I don't want to fall asleep doing a um, live. <laughs> uh, that would probably not be a first, but I don't want to be a second either. Good night, Kimberly. Yes, Nicole and everybody, I am going to sign off. Thanks so much for being here. I'm going to go um, write my letter and I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. Y'all get some rest, and if you're across the pond, have a great day, and I will see you on the flip side. Bye.